Hi, Mara. <laughs> She's the first one in here. <gasps> oh, everybody's coming. I'm in this, um, in a guest bedroom in my house that has this amazing red headboard. I feel like it's such a power move. I actually can't sleep in here because it's like too intense, but look, it even has like a little, it's like, it's like receded. It's like, ooh, it's like step into my red headboard bedroom. I'm so excited to be going live and I'm sorry. And I realize that this is like an awkward time of day and I hope that people aren't um, having to like miss work or school to tune into this. Um, does, does work in school happen anymore in this Zoom age, in this era of remote learning? I don't know. Uh, this is a day that I have off and I have a ton of work coming up the next, the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to just take this time right now. Oh my God, Mara's in class right now. <laughs> Hi, Una. My baddest bitch of all. God, I love you. Um... I wanted to just take this time so I could answer some questions about what's going on this weekend and also just say hi to everyone because it's been a little while and uh, I, I um, am so excited to see everybody who's been playing Call of Duty and everyone who's loving Helen Park, which is like, makes me so happy because I love Helen Park so much. Um, fun fact, I put up a story yesterday wondering who would win in a fight between Isabel Evans, who I play on Roswell, New Mexico, who's an alien, and Helen Park, my Call of Duty avatar, who's, you know, an agent in MI6. It was a very close race, actually, but Helen Park seemed to have won out in the end. And it was a tight, it was tight. Because I think you do, you have like telekinesis and alien superpowers, which is arguably very powerful. But I was thinking that, um, you know, it's very possible that MI6, especially in the 80s, they had some intel on extraterrestrial life and probably had a good sense of how to take them down. So my guess is maybe that Helen Park, you know, knew what Isabel's Achilles heel was and and she got her. That's so strange thing to think about. But anyway, thank you to everyone who tuned in and, and voted for one or, or the other. I love both of them very much. Um, yeah, like Isabel can do telekinesis and stuff, but if her powers are rendered useless by that like magical powder, by that, um, yeah, Liz Orteco had made that serum that like rendered aliens powerless. So that would be bad for Isabel. Bad news. Okay. Um, Ow, ow. Is that right? Ow, ow. Is that what it was? Okay. First wanted to say a little hi to all of the international fans too, because I have, I get a lot of messages from people who are from, for instance, Brasil. Eu quero dizer muito, muito, muito obrigado. Uh, I love so much. Uh, I went to Brazil one time. I had the time of my life. I've never been more hungover in my entire life than when I was in Brazil and I drank a thousand caipirinhas in one night and I woke up the next morning lying underneath my bed. Like, I'm so hungover. Bubble up. Um, but anyway, I speak some Portuguese. Faz muito tempo que eu não falei português, mas eu estudei português na, na universidade porque eu fiz a minha pesquisa em Moçambique. So I have a lot of love for all of my um, Portuguese speaking fans and um, hello from Be hello to Belgium and to people all around the world. I really, um, I was trying to take some, you know, further people further east into consideration when I was doing my live stream times. Uh, I know that it's late there for you. I'm actually in mountain time since I'm in New Mexico. So I'm an hour ahead of Los Angeles two hours behind New York and like eight hours behind Greenwich Mean Time. And then from there, I know there's like Central European time. So um, 
Yeah, I tried to give you, you know, there's a, the option early on Sunday to tune in for that live stream. Um, let me talk a little bit about that first and then we can have, um, I can have some fun. I'll do some like park lines and stuff if you want. Um, okay, so Streamly is this amazing platform right now, you know, conventions and things, it's hard to do that because of COVID. So normally we'd be wanting to get out and all of my dudes from Call of Duty would be wanting to get out and go to conventions and sign a bunch of autographs and meet you guys and have that wonderful interaction with all the people who like our characters because it's so cool to to have gotten to know you guys through through this game and unfortunately we can't you know we, we can't be going to conventions and things like that right now so streamily this app kind of allows for that convention experience but online which is amazing um so basically, if you go to that link that's in my bio, you can follow it to my Streamly page and it'll say that, you know, I'm doing two sessions. I'm doing a solo one on Saturday and then I'm joining uh, Damon Dayoub, who plays uh, Lazar, um, on Sunday. And I did both of them. I chose kind of morning-ish time so that I could, um, you know, take into consideration all the different people who might be tuning in from around the world. Um, a little note, I just got word from my producers on Roswell that I have a stunt rehearsal on Saturday, which is so cool. I'm really excited every time Isabel gets to have um, fight sequences, and apparently we're going to have like a five-hour stunt rehearsal, so you can imagine that it's going to be some really fun, cool stunt stuff. Um, that being said, I might have to change my uh, Saturday live stream to accommodate that since it's five hours. So I might be doing something a little bit later on Saturday. And then people who want to tune in, you know, if you're in Europe, you can try to tune in on Sunday morning. That's when I'll be doing, um, you know, so it'll, it won't be as late for you there on Sunday. So anyway, um, I'll keep you posted on the times just to make sure. But again, on that Streamly page, on my bio, it'll have the times that I'm gonna be doing the live streaming. So how it works, I'm sure you can see I have a bunch of prints up there that I'm so excited about. I spent a lot of time trying to like figure out how best to showcase Helen Park and all of her like 80s camp glory. And I really, um, I really like the prints that came out and there are, you know, two headshots there and also um, a couple of Roswell images for anybody who likes those as well, if they're not, not into Helen Park, which is, what's wrong with you but fine um so basically you buy a print and it shows up on my streamily page i'm going to go through and basically one by one i think it's based on the order that you buy them you can um you're gonna like basically be put into a queue and i'm going to on the day of my signing go through and i'll basically be you know, I'll see your message, whatever you want written on it you can be like lily i'd like you to someone asked me to draw a picture of a frog on their print i'm like I'll try my best. I'm not a great visual artist, but I will try to do a cool frog for that person. But you can make a request like, I'd like you to say, you know, safe park, park's better than Lazar, screw Lazar, Lazar's dumb, D uh, down with Lazar, whatever Lazar, you know, whatever. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I love, I love Lazar. But you can have me write whatever you'd like on there and then I'll see it. We'll be live together. I'll be like, okay, this one goes out to Tommy in Scottsdale. What's up, Tommy? Um, thank you so much for buying this print. This is my favorite one. I'm gonna write right now. I saved Park because I'm a good guy. Oh, thank you so much, Tom. And I'll, you know, give it a little kiss and I'll be like, that's gonna come straight to you, Tom, once this live stream is done. So once I go through everybody's things, you know, I will be having fun together, I hope. I think I'll put on some music. Maybe we'll take a dance break. Like we can, you know, shoot the shit a little bit and just talk and laugh and have a good time while I'm doing these signings. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, there will be two of them. So you can tune in either day, both days, whatever. I think you might get a message from Streamily. I have to check on this, but I think that you're given a message when I'm coming up towards your number. So if your number like 58 on the queue, I think they'll be like, hey, by the way, she's gonna sign your thing soon. So you can, if you're you know, busy doing something else, but you wanna catch just the part where I sign your print, I think it'll give you a heads up and you can log on, watch me sign your print and then be like, thanks, bye. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that uh, that's also possible. You don't have to like sit around for hours um, watching me 
do weird things unless you want to. You're totally invited. Um, and I'm excited to do this. I love things like this. I wish I could meet you all in person. I've had so much fun at Comic Cons and things like that before. Last year at Comic Con was, it was such a trip for me. Um, I have. Yeah, I just have such a good time interacting with people who are excited about the characters and who, you know, have things to say. And I feel like I've formed, like, real friendships from people who are, um, yeah, fans of, of the show and the game. So um, to all of you, you know who you are and I appreciate you. Um, but anyway, unfortunately, we can't do it in person yet, hopefully one day. But for now, we can do it on Streamly. So the platform's great. It is. It has been a lot of work to get it up and running, like figuring out all the prints that I want and carving out the time and getting it all sorted. Um, I'm getting mine to the printers, so they're going to be nice and fresh and going to get some cool Sharpies and things like that. So I'll be all ready and set up. Um, and then we'll just have a good time over the weekend. I'm hoping. I think so. You guys can tune in. And if you want to like make me like re song recommendations, we can even do like a little playlist thing. We can have different visiting DJs. If you have any ideas, let me know. It could be really, we could make it a, an interesting and fun kind of experience. So that's what I'm hoping for the weekend. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, Meals on Wheels, which is where I'll be donating my proceeds. You know, um, so many of you maybe know that I speak Spanish. I don't know if I've posted much about it, but I grew up speaking Spanish. Una Colombia me, me crió y tengo como ese gran bendición de tener una colombiana criándome. And Olguita, la reina de mi corazón, ella ahorita está en Medellín, en Colombia. So my little abuelita who raised me up from the moment I was born, she's Colombian and um, she lived in the United States for 35 years and never learned how to speak English, which is incredible. It's like a feat in and of itself. She was determined. She was like, why? would I learn such an ugly language as English? And I was like, no sé, tienes razón. So my entire family bent the will of Maria Olga Tavares and we all learned Spanish, which was um, amazing. And as a side note, yes, I also do speak a tiny bit of Russian. I took it in college, but I'm not very good at it. I'll, I'll get to that later. Anyway, um, Olga, this woman who raised me, she's 94, and she's in Medellin right now. And I haven't seen her in over like a year and a half because of COVID stuff. And just because when, you know, I, I went and visited her once in, in Colombia recently, and it was so good to see her and her family. But I haven't been able to spend time with her. And maybe a lot of you have um, little abuelitas or abuelitos or you know, grandpappies and well, aunties or whoever it is that you can't see right now because of COVID. And um, I think about how many elderly people are in a position where they can't see their families and the people that they love. And it makes me like, my heart just is like breaking for them. Um, I wish so much that I could see my little abuelita and I've been thinking about that a lot recently because she's not in great health right now and I would do anything to be able to go and be with her. But um, as I was thinking about this, I was just inspired to work with an organization that was supporting elderly people during this time because I think it's really hard, you know, for for older folks who can't get out of their house who are maybe, you know, high risk because of their age or their health or, you know, they're no longer able to work and um, they might just be high risk for not, not being able to get food to them or um, just being lonely and being kind of trapped at home. And I wanted so much to be able to support people who are experiencing that. So yeah, that's where I got the idea to donate the proceeds that I'm uh, making from this signing to Meals on Wheels because it's an incredible organization. They go out and they not only do they bring food to different elderly homes who are in need of, you know, meals, but they also check in on them and just make sure they're okay. And I know um, 
for a lot of people just having somebody to make sure that they're okay and, and have, you know, some attention and love that means so much to them because a lot of people are, um, just lonely right now. Right. So anyway, I'm thinking about my abuelita Olgi and I'm carrying her in my heart as I'm doing all of this and thinking about wanting to, yeah, support that organization kind of with her in my heart. And, um, so I hope that you think of, um, your own elders and the people who came before you, you know, I know that I wouldn't be like, I would be a different person today if I hadn't been raised by Olga and to have her in my life was like the greatest miracle. <laughs> and I'm so grateful. She taught me so much and she, she brought a totally different perspective. Um, and some of my best friends are like elderly and it's the best. I don't know if you guys have any older friends, like really different generation, like like grandparent generation age, but they have the best perspective on life. Like they're able to just be so cool. And I feel like they're very hands off in terms of not like being like, you really need to get a job and get married. Like what, what are you going to have kids? Maybe they kind of push kids. Olga definitely is like, pero cuando vas a tener babies? And I'm like, si Dios lo quiere. That's always, my, I'm like, if God wills it, that's like, you, an old person can't say anything back. If you're like, God willing, I have left it in God's hands. They're like, true. <laughs> um, but anyway, I encourage you all to have, um, to make and, and to maintain relationships with old, old folks because elders have all of the wisdom and all of the life experience. So Meals on Wheels is where I'll be sending all of my proceeds from this, um, yeah, I feel like that's, I'm, and I definitely encourage you guys if you're interested in anything like that. I know that Meals on Wheels has different chapters all over the place and you can go if you want, you can be one of those people to deliver meals on wheels and you can go and knock on somebody's door and make their life, you know, feel, you can be a ray of sunshine for someone. So I think, um, it could be a really, yeah, meaningful thing to do if you're looking for something like that. Okay, so what else? Do you guys have any other questions about Streamily? I wonder, um, I know some people from across the seas have been asking, um, you know, if, if they can, if it'll ship internationally, it definitely will. Um, hi, Pilar. Pilar is on here and Pilar is the most talented woman on the Roswell set. She is our tailor and she hooks it up for me, Pilar. Um, yes. So if you guys have any other questions about Streamily, yeah, it ships internationally. You can, you know, it'll convert your currency. So that's not a problem. And I think that might be maybe, is this another, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I don't know why people want the ooh, ooh. Okay. Um, now for some park, it's been a little while. I have to think about her voice, actually. And when I was hired to play this person, one trick, I think I mentioned this in the Dan Allen gaming interview that I did. Um, when I was hired to play her, I, I decided to pick one person to embody. And that person was Lady Eboshi from Princess Mononoke. Does anyone like Lady Eboshi? She's my favorite character. And she's so, she's terrific. And yet she's also very bad. Um, happy birthday, Dawn, soon. So Park was sort of um, fashioned a bit after this very kind of high born, but grounded sort of savage, but also very sophisticated voice that I think it's Minnie Driver plays. Um, and she's just phenomenal. And uh, that's kind of where I took my inspiration from her as a character. If anyone hasn't seen Princess Mononoke, don't be cheeky, go and watch it. It's the best film ever. Closely followed by Howl's Moving Castle. Castle. One funny little anecdote about doing Park's voice 
was that halfway through the recording, I started working with uh, a man named Dan who was directing, who was British. And I was suddenly like, oh my God, I actually have like a British person here now who's directing me. And I suddenly got so nervous that I was doing a really <laughs> bad English accent. <laughs> and I'd be like, uh, um, could you, and how would, just to make sure it's plant, it's a plant, 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 plant. Plant. It's a plant. Plant the grenade. We're going to plant. We're going to plant the grenade. Accents are amazing. I have so much fun doing different accents. Um, little known fact. Halfway through recording Helen Park, I was complimenting one of the writers on America Town, which is a really fun little part of the game. And... Um, I was joking about these lines that were in there that were so funny about hamburgers and like, welcome to Burger Town and all this stuff. Now, I had, um, I did, as I had said, I studied Russian for like two semesters when I was in college. All that I can say in Russian is, Извините, пожалуйста, где тут моя собака? Anybody know what that means? Извините, пожалуйста, где тут моя собака? Means, excuse me, please, have you seen my dog around here? Anyway, this is the one thing I can ask in Russian is if anyone's seen my dog. So now all I have to do is go to Russia and lose my dog. And then I'll be able to use my skills. Um, anyway, I, I do think that I gained a little bit of a Russian accent in speaking English because they let me do some of the Russian in it. The guy was like, hey, do you want to do some of these Russian lines for like the automaton? There's like a computer countdown. So somewhere in Call of Duty, there's like an Easter egg. I don't think anyone knows this. Somewhere in Call of Duty, Park's voice, aka me, is doing a Russian accent counting down where I'm like, we'll automatically self-destruct in three, two, one. Exes denied. Exes denied. So if anyone can find that spot, that would be fun to, to link. Um, I am half Polish. My mother is Polish. All full Polish, so I'm half. And I don't speak much Polish, but I do celebrate a lot of the Polish traditions. My mom being super Polish Catholic, we grew up celebrating Vigilia and singing Stolat and breaking up the Opłatek and we have Pierogi and all of that. And it's, I love it so much, especially Easter. Um, I made two Easter's ago a butter lamb out of a giant block of butter that I froze and then carved. And it came out less of a lamb and more of a St. Bernard dog. Um... But I was really proud of that sculpture, actually. So I would love to go to Poland. I've never been to Poland and I would love to go. I would love so much to be able to go on, yeah, to Russia too. I'd like that very much. So next time I'm able to travel, I'll be hitting up some more Eastern parts of Europe and Asia and getting, getting further over there maybe get to Russia and definitely get, get to the homeland of Poland and see my people. I miss my people. It's time for me to reconnect with my peoples. Um, do I like Italia? Oh my goodness, who does not like Italia? I spent two weeks in Italy last summer. No, oh God, last summer was the middle of COVID. Two summers ago, I went to Cornelia in Cinque Terre. Oh my God, it was phenomenal. There's nothing but Italian food, Italian wine. I loved it so much. I think actually you can check out in my um, stories. I took a, a road trip after the trip to Italy with my boyfriend. I went to France and was on a road trip with a friend of mine, Mia, and we drove all around the bottom of France together. And um, I think Hot Curl Summer is my, uh, is my hi highlight. You can go and check out my extremely fun Southern France road trip. I don't know if you've ever guys have ever taken a, a road trip around a foreign country before, but that is a fun thing to do, especially when that foreign country is France and it's the middle of summer. Ah, mon dieu, it was so perfect. 
delicious food and the sea was perfect and I did nothing but eat and sleep and swim in the water. Okay. Um, uh-oh. Sims, Sims are mad. She's got a boyfriend. I do. I do. But I also fucking love all my Sims, so. Um, can I speak any German? My best friend lives in Germany right now and actually right before the Call of Duty audition. So it was like, they didn't tell me what it was that I was auditioning for. They kept it super secret because they're like, you know, it was Call of Duty. So they, I, they wouldn't tell me what it was. Everyone kind of had a suspicion. Like everyone was like, it's probably Call of Duty because it's really big. But I went in there and I was like, okay, I have to like blow this audition out of the water. So I called my best friend up. I had my, my Russian line. Because I was reading about Helen Park and they were like, she speaks all these different languages. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to bust out my Spanish. I'm going to bust out my Portuguese. I'm going to bust out some French, some Italian. I'm going to have my, my Russian line that I can do. Called my friend and I asked her for some German. And like right as I was walking in, I was trying to remember it. I was like, ich bin du totalen Drückendrecken. I don't remember what the line was. It was like, would you like some beer? <laughs> it was something very simple. But I made sure I did all of that for Ivy Eisenberg, the amazing casting director who did one of cast me. I was like, and also, um, here's listen to me speak this other language that I can do anytime you want me to. Yeah, if you want, I can just speak that language. Um, would you like some beer? Can I please have the part? I did get the part and I was happy. Um, a little bit about my coworkers, because I know some of you guys have been asking about uh, the other dudes on Call of Duty. <laughs> Who are the best? I love these men so much. And I feel like I have gained a whole set of brothers. Literally, as I have been doing this live, I have gotten 50 text messages on our group message, which by the way is called Badass Mofos. Pretty sure Reggie came up with that name. Reggie is, yes, someone just asked, does he have as much energy and is he so positive as he seems in real life? Like, yes, Reggie is a saint on this earth. He is an angel who has come down from heaven and he has blessed us with his presence on this earth. I highly recommend everyone going and following all of my dudes, but Reggie does some super inspiring work with the Valley of Change. He was out there all summer protesting for Black Lives Matter and he was just like so vocal and such an advocate and... I would be on there and I'd see like people were coming at him with, with hate too. You know, there were people who would be posting and saying just like nasty things. And Reggie had so much love and integrity with all, with all people. Like that man is a shining beacon of light and yeah, he's so cool and funny and just like personable. You, you want him to be your best friend. And there are times we just like text him like Reggie. How you doing, man? I just, I'm such a fan of yours. And then Bruce, who plays Adler, is phenomenal. He's like, you know, the leader of the bunch. He's he's done this so much and worked on Halo and done so much voiceover. So he's like, he's just a seasoned professional, but he's so funny and cool. And like low-key, real hot, right? Like real silver. I'm like, also I was like, hey, Adler. I don't know if you guys saw that scene in Call of Duty where um, Park and Adler go into a room. They're like, we need to talk alone. I was like, draw the blinds, Bruce. Draw the blinds. Um, he's phenomenal. So funny and great. And uh, of course, Damon, who played Lazar. Um, we had a special bond because Park and Lazar were like, we came as this like duo that like kind of counterpoints, right? Um couldn't be more different the characters and but they had this like kind of innate chemistry and um that scene where park talks about madame shell and she goes into this terrible scar on her neck and how madame shell came after me and um you know and he what a coincidence that she, her body washed up on one side of the river and her head on the other and she kind of calls him out like yo you you killed this woman who tried to assassinate me. And he's like, I'd call it poetic justice. And there's like that moment. Well, the writers apparently were very unsure if they wanted to even include a scene like that. They were like, should we, is this like too much or, but one of the writers, Murray, I think it was, wrote that scene. And um, we did one take, we did it, we did just one take. 
And it came out so well, the director was like, you know what? That's it. We don't need to get, we don't need to do it again. I was very proud of that. We did just a one take scene. And so the first time we ever did it was the only time we ever did it. And that's the one that you see uh, in the game itself. So, and I think after that, I started getting more scripts where Park and Lazar were like, there was a little bit of something between them. Um, so I feel like because of that, that one little fluke scene that almost was like, should we do it or not? It wound up having like a, um, yeah, a really big impact on the narrative of the story. And I think they wound up like making more of it. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, being in Call of Duty was extremely fun. I had such a really great time doing it. And again, I'm so grateful to all of you who play and everybody who saves Park in particular. Let me just give a little shout out. Anyone who has saved Park here, I got mad love for you. Mad love. Thank you. Um, I am the daughter of Beverly in The Big Bang Theory. That is my mom. My mom is amazing. She's an incredible woman. And yeah, I saw some people earlier asking about Mama Mia. And um, yeah, her work. She's not on Instagram. She's barely, she's barely on the telephone. <laughs> she always claimed to be a Luddite. We didn't have a television when I was younger. We grew up in like the boonies in like rural, rural Northwest Connecticut, more cows than people. It was like a little dairy farm area. And yeah, we didn't have a TV. And I think my mother's just not like a tech person. So she's definitely not on Instagram, but she's um, so incredible and has taught me so much. I'm so grateful to her. What an incredible, strong woman. And she's like the consummate professional. You know, she is always so prepared and she knows everybody's name on the crew. And she's just always 15 minutes early to everything. And she's just like, she's who you would be a number one draft pick, you know? So it's she had so much fun doing Mamma Mia. And I remember while she was doing Mamma Mia, I was in Mozambique trying to make that, um, the documentary that was why I learned to speak Portuguese because I was doing um, a documentary film down there for my undergraduate research. And I was living in Maputo, the capital of Mozambique. And it was pretty like, it was, you know, it wasn't glamorous, at, you know, it was it, wonderful, but it was not like a glamorous experience very much. I remember calling my mom at one point and being like, how you doing, mom? Like, what's going on? She's like, darling, hi. Yes, I'm on a beach in Greece and I'm surrounded by all these handsome young men and they are lifting me up into the air and I am singing along and it's so sunny and warm and I just finished the most delicious dinner and wine and I'm having the time of my life. And I was like, what is wrong with this picture? <laughs> my mom. <laughs> but God bless her, B, she's living her, uh, living her best life. And God knows she's worked so hard to get there. So, um, I'm so couldn't be more proud of my mom. And my pop too was an actor and um and also a writer and so talented always played bad guys and um yeah i love i love my father so much and he was um super talented and i miss him a lot so my god we have still people who are in here and tuned in and i'm like i god bless you all for sticking with me because i don't know what i what we've been talking about um i hope you've had a good time i think soon i'm gonna go on a walk because it's a beautiful day how about i take you guys outside quickly because i'm so stiff sitting on my bed for so long so i'm gonna show you what my view is like out here because i live right by the mountains and it's Stunning. It's stunning. Okay, wow. Can you see? It's so bright. So I don't know if my phone is going to do a very good job of it. But over here we have the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. And they're just stunning. And in the back, there's a big ski basin over this way. 
Maybe if I hold you way up, you can see. I think it's actually covered in snow today, but it's amazing. Like, look, it's like so bright and beautiful and there's still snow on the mountains. So I love New Mexico so much. And if anyone ever wants to visit New Mexico, I could not recommend it more. It's extremely wonderful. Ciao, Brasil. Tudo bem? Oh, I can't wait to go back to Brazil. I can't wait to travel so much when I when all of this uh, quarantining is done. But um, in the meantime, I'm so grateful because we've been able to keep shooting Roswell season three. It's so exciting. It's really good. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, like I said, I have a big stunt rehearsal on Saturday. Um, and I'm so excited because Isabella is about to kick some fucking ass. Um, and it's going to be phenomenal. Also, I just had the immense pleasure of being directed by Heather Hemmons, who is the love of my life. And she is so good. <laughs> I was so proud of her. I cried. Yesterday was my final day working with her. And I wept when we wrapped because I was like, I don't want to work with anyone else. Working with your best friends is like the most fun thing. And my cast of Roswell, I just love them all so much. We've been so lucky to be working and um, continuing to make this amazing show. I hope you guys all tune in. I don't know when season three is going to premiere yet. It will be premiering. I promise it will be. But soon, soon, hopefully they'll announce it. Because um, I can't wait for you guys to start seeing what we've been making. And... uh yeah, here's to many more seasons working on Roswell. So, anyway, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who tunes in. And uh, all of my simps out there. Te amo con toda mi alma. Eu te amo tanto. Ya te blue blue. Ich liebe dich. I think I'm running out of um, ways to say I love you. But I really do. And... Um, I can't wait to get to go out in person and, and connect with you guys in person. But until then, I'm hoping that we can have like a really fun weekend with the live stream. So um, yeah, go and visit. The link is, is in my bio. Go and visit that page if you want to get a print. Um, I included one that's $20 because I know the $40 is, you know, I know it's a high price. It's kind of the the going rate on Streamly and I didn't want to undercut other people and I figured since I'm sending it to Meals on Wheels I felt good about that but I know it's it can be a lot and I know in these times it's a little bit of a luxury item so there is a, a print available for 20 bucks if anybody wants to um you know get one that's half off and um yeah go and check out the link get some prints tune in this weekend and hang out with me again uh we'll have some you know, we'll have some fun hang time. I'll do, I'll, I'll cook up some fun ideas so we can, you know, keep it interesting the whole time. And anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And um, until I see you again, take care. May the force be with you. Te agradezco tanto. Gracias por venir. Nos vemos prontico. Y Dios te guarde.